Well, hi everybody, Pat here with another song here on Facebook, and um, I kind of feel like those Olympic skiers, you know, when they get on TV and they always hold the ski up so you can see the logo. I play a seagull guitar, yes. Seagull did not pay me anything for that. Um, it's been kind of a busy week, so it's finally Good Friday afternoon when I get to record this, but I thought maybe I'd share an Easter song for this weekend. And uh, how about, how about an Irish Rovers Easter song? Ah, yeah, all right, here we go. I danced in the morning when the world was begun. I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Danced for the scribes and the Pharisees, but they would not dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for some fishermen, for James and John. They came with me and the dance went on. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all. Wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on a Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me high. They left me there on a cross to die. I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. <laughs> no, I am the dance and I still go on. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all. Wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. They cut me down but I left up high. I am the life that'll never, never die. I'll live in you if you live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Hey, before I let you go, although I guess at any moment you can turn this off, what am I saying? But anyway, I wanted to share a couple words from, uh, actually, uh, from a, a book in the New Testament of the Bible, and the book of Acts. Uh, it's called the Acts of the Apostles, but it's really the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, Dr. Luke is uh, describing uh, a time when the man that we call St. Paul was actually explaining God to some people, and he said... Because I, and I was thinking about this, right? Because um, we're we're so concerned, as we should be, that we're not able to meet together uh, here uh, as we usually do when we think about going to church, you know, at Easter time. Now there are those people down in the southern United States, and they're just being foolish, right, by ignoring um, all of the recommendations and deciding to meet together. Um, now, for sure. God will look after them. They may just get to meet him a little sooner if they keep ignoring the advice of the doctors. But anyway, I was thinking of these words as I was thinking about this particular Easter time. And it says here that the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. Isn't that interesting? church is just a building, right? It's just a, it's just a bunch of bricks and mortar and nice stained glass. God doesn't live in there. He dwells in other temples, temples of the Holy Spirit, people, the people of God. And he's not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations. And I'm amazed 
even today, when we think of you know how much racism there still exists in the world today, but the scriptures say no, we're, there's only one race. Yeah, it's the human race. Um, now, some of us, okay, we haven't been blessed with as much melatonin, so we don't look quite as good as some people. But hey, we're all in this together, aren't we? He made all the nations from one man that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. So you're not here by accident. God did this so they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he's not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring, everybody made in the image of God. Now, therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Hey, that's that old Bible word you've heard, right? Repent. But it really means to just change your mind. Change your mind about God. Change your direction in running away from him. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. And you know, elsewhere, uh, same, same man, St. Paul, was writing to a church in the city of Corinth. And, and he said, hey, listen, if, if Christ didn't raise from the dead, if he isn't risen, then you're still in your sins. You're, you're to be pitied. Some people pity us already, you know, because we follow what, someone who lived and died 2,000 years ago. Ah, but there's a difference. There's a difference. I mean, all kinds of different religious groups, and you can follow some very uh, intelligent and very wise people, and maybe your life will be better off for it. But we follow one who claimed to be the Son of God, who claimed to be divine. And God proved that his Son Jesus was that by raising him from the dead. That's the message of Easter. We don't serve, we don't serve a dead teacher. We serve, well, as it said in the song, the Lord of the dance. They cut me down, but I leapt up high. I am the light that'll never, never die. And I'll live in you if you live in me. Wow. Okay, well, you know, it's a very weird year, but, uh, from my house to yours, have a blessed Easter.